In this video, I get a new hat. I show you a new project at the shop. Alex shares their professional expertise on how to properly change brake pads. And I paint a wall. Let's go. What's up guys, Mike here from The Lost Co. Welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to do a little bit of a vlog and see what's going around in the shop. And to start, well, let's just turn the camera around and show you. I don't know if you can see, but it is very cold outside. I woke up to snow in my backyard. So we're gonna start by getting a beanie here. So let me just pick out which one I want. We got either the Ride Bikes Have Fun or just the classic Lost Co. logo. I'm gonna go with this one. All right, Brody, what's the cost for one of these beanies? The 17 whole dollars. $17 for a beanie? Yeah. That's perfect because it's beanie season. This is where I put my social security number. Thank you very much. Sweet. Woo. All right, that's much better. Now my head is actually warm. These things are on sale for 17 bucks. Both of our beanies. We have the Ride Bikes Have Fun and then the black one with our Losco logo on it. 17 bucks on clearance right now just because we've had these designs kind of sticking around for a while and we want to help everybody out because it is the cold time of the year. So go grab a beanie or any other merch from our website. Most of it is discounted right now. All right, let's actually get into what's going on at the shop today. It's Tuesday and there's not a ton going on right now. It is getting cold outside, so there's less and less repair bikes coming in. I'll actually go show you the pretty barren zone of the shop which holds the repair bikes on the wall. So we have all of these spots from left all the way to right over there. And uh, we don't really have many bikes in right now for service. Uh, we're still a few days out just because these things still take time, but there's just not a huge backlog uh, just because, again, it is getting pretty, cold outside so people are riding a little bit less right now and it's starting to become the time of the year where we don't have a ton of quantity of bicycles in the shop but more so a smaller number of large projects so I think that this suspension bench over here and Alex our suspension tech is going to be really busy the next couple of months Besides bikes being worked on, we have one large project that we're working on. And yes, you guys are gonna think this is ridiculous, but we are working on, again, another new video studio. So the shop used to end right here at this wall. We put a doorway in and our neighbors actually moved out and we got this whole new space that's attached right to the bike shop. We used to have our video studio actually across the street over there, uh, down the block. And it was kind of annoying to get to because you had to put parts on a cart and then walk them down to actually get them over to take photos and videos of them. So now we have this straight up right next to the shop. And it's kind of silly that we've changed where our video set is so many times, but it's really hard to get commercial space in Bellingham. And also, honestly, we were kind of just waiting for our neighbors to move out. So we had this shop space right here because we knew that they were gonna move out eventually. We just didn't know when. And so, yeah, they just moved out and we, put a hole in the wall and we have a doorway into this new space and it's super rad having such a convenient location with such a large space to play with that is just so close to the shop. We also got this new office here for Steve. Hi Steve. Everybody this is Steve. He does all the purchasing and ordering and managing and receiving and he's got this new little office here. Before he was over there kind of in the mix with all the shipping people. And now he's got an office because he's doing most of the big brain operations here at the shop and scrolling and copying and pasting and ordering. So super stoked to have an office for him. Are you excited as well, Steve? So excited. So excited, look at that excitement. Even a thumbs up, hell yeah. So now let's talk about this actual big open part of this new shop space that we have. This whole thing is gonna be our video studio. So that right here, this is a, a huge mess right now because we just got this started the other day. So we're just gonna have a big old workbench right here. Got that corner wall. We've got our big old logo that we used to have up and haven't in a while. So that will be up. We're gonna have some pegboard over here with tools. And then over there, we're gonna have more of an open wall that we are gonna put some wood on or some material, haven't decided yet. And yeah, we're gonna have this whole whole area to shoot in. So it's gonna be a pretty large space and we're gonna have quite a bit of freedom on what we can do with the actual set and filming. So that leads to the other projects. Basically the past couple weeks, we have been uh, painting this wall and then we had my contractor friend finish up that sales room because it was, it was in pretty rough shape. This whole shop used to actually be uh, used for manufacturing pieces out of metal. And so it was really, really dirty. And so we had a lot of cleaning to do and just a lot of refreshing and refurbing. So it used to all be 
be this color scheme, that black, white stripe, and then that like gold color. And so now we're just kind of starting fresh with a nice coat of white paint. So I'm gonna finish that up today, and then this space should be pretty much ready to go to actually start building the video set over here. So we obviously have a big TV over here. That's actually gonna be mounted on the wall right over there. And then we're gonna have a, a big new table that we present videos at and you know hold parts at and things like that. That we'll have on wheels, and then that will actually double as a meeting table. So we'll have it over here to film videos, and then we'll just move it over here to actually have meetings and things like that and, and go over uh, meeting stuff, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, it's very rad that we have a new video studio literally right connected to the shop that we have all the space to play with. That is awesome, but honestly, I'm just as excited to have this little space where we're gonna have like meetings and things like that because we've never had a space like that. So whenever we had to all like meet up and talk about something like a project that we were working on, we would literally just kind of do it in passing in the middle of the shop and it, it didn't really work out efficiently ever. So I'm really stoked to actually have a place to meet. So this new space is awesome. I am so happy that our neighbors moved out and actually a funny story. So the people that used to be in this space was a business called Lost Bikes. Lost Bikes. We are the Lost Co. They were Lost Bikes. And we had literally nothing to do with each other. Uh, we actually both started our businesses around the same time, back in around 2015, 2016. We didn't really know each other or anything like that, but uh, we ran into each other on the trails like a year after, and we kind of had this conversation of like, oh yeah, so you're Lost Bikes and we're Lost Co. Okay, cool, yeah, so it was kind of a weird thing, but basically they, they were making bikes. Uh, they never actually had one come out to production, but they did have a lot of cool prototypes over the years. They just never really released one for mass sales or production. So over the years, if you saw any articles from Pink Bike that said like 10 cool steel frames from small manufacturers, you probably saw it from Lost Bike. So I'll put some up on the screen right here. They had a cool one called the Lemonade, really cool looking, but they just never really released it to the public to sell. So they actually are just gonna take a break from manufacturing and they moved out of the shop and so we took it over. We're not sure what they're gonna do in the future, but yeah, so it was, it was kind of confusing for customers that would pull up, they'd go and see their door that said Lost Bikes and then ours is all Lost Go. Sometimes they didn't know where to go, but most of the time they figured it out. So just to add a little bit of the confusion for people unfortunately but that is all done with now and so it's just us the lost co here and we got a new space so that's rad all right so that's just a little update on what's going around the shop not necessarily in the bike portion so now let's just wait for the mechanics to get here they get here around 10 when we open and i'm just going to drink some coffee go catch up on some emails and then once the mechanics are in we'll actually check out what's going on in the stands today and see what they're wrenching on <sighs> all right the mechanics are in for the day let's turn the camera around see what they are working on in their stands What's up, BJ? Oh, howdy. I see you're working on a little transition spur. Yeah. 120 mil up front, 120 mil in the back, and uh, yeah, a little bit of a down country bike. Now, BJ, you are known for liking some funny bikes, <laughs> aka single speeds and hard tails. That's very polite of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I think you've called them silly bikes too. They are silly. Um, I feel like a down country bike would be good for someone like yourself. Would you like to have a spur like this? Yeah, actually, I think it's a super sweet bike for kind of the general easy to access riding from town here. Uh, you know, super efficient, you know, good climbing. Uh, yeah, that's what makes the silly bike so fun. Absolutely. Now, you'd probably keep gears on it or you'd try to single speed it? I, I'd try to find a way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what are you doing to this here transition spur? Uh, well, for the most part, you know, it's like the snow just kind of started falling. So doing a little bit of like winter prep for the most part, putting some fresh tires on there, something a little more aggressive. Okay. And just kind of doing some basic maintenance, things like that, you know, uh, doing a little seat post service. Uh, you know, got a little kind of mud and gunk down on there. So gonna pull that apart, clean okay. it out and, you know, make everything good as new. Nice. Got a one up dropper here. Okay, the tires that we have on the bike right now, we've got a dissector on the rear. Yep. And then what was on the front? Uh, we're gonna do an assegai up front. But what are we replacing? Uh, so there's actually dissector front and rear on this. The rear was definitely real uh, chewed up from you know, a summer's worth of riding. So we put the, uh, the front still had a decent amount of tread left on it. So we put the front on the back and putting something a little more aggressive up front to uh, you know, help deal with mud and all of that. Sweet. Yeah, because these come stock, I think, with a dissector front and rear. 
Yeah, it sounds right. Yeah, I think that sounds right because it rolls really fast but still has good cornering grip, which is, you know, what Transition builds these bikes for. Pretty aggressive for riding, even though it's short travel. And so I could definitely see going to something like an Asagai or anything more aggressive in the front. So that makes total sense. And especially because it just started snowing, which means we got that uh, freeze thaw on the dirt and it's going to need some going to need some knobs up front in the mud. So that is rad. Thanks, BJ. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> What's up, Alex? You are now working on a transition patrol. Very uncommon. We don't see many transitions around here in Bellingham. <laughs> no, no, they are very, very hard to find here. <laughs> what are you uh, working on with this here patrol? We're doing a whole lot of stuff. We're doing a full fork service, shock service. We're going to check out the linkage bearings. Um, we're doing some work to the brakes as well. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, just kind of tidying up the brakes. He uh, had mentioned that he put in new pads, but not anything else. So he didn't, you know, exercise the pistons or, um, you know, relieve the system or, or kind of like uh, re refresh or resurface the pads or rotors. So they just weren't working very well. So gotcha. He um, kind of like the a main thing that we we like to do, and you know, really should be done anytime you put new pads in or changing up your brake system is is to put a put a syringe on the lever. Um, what this does is it allows any excess fluid or any volume of fluid to kind of purge out um, a safe place because when you're pushing in the pistons on a brake caliper, it uh, you know the fluid has to go somewhere, and uh, especially with these codes. Um, well, not especially, but with the codes, yeah. <laughs> um, they're like they're super, super tough going downhill, but they're still really delicate when you're working on them. So pushing in the pistons, if you were to have everything closed up, can add pressure to the the bladder that's in the lever, which can cause issues like you know it can cause it to rupture or just be displaced and kind of folded around and not act the right way. So. Um, that's what we're going to do, is exercise the pistons, cool. maybe do a little bleed to the system, kind of take out a little bit of air that's in the, you know, hiding in there and make it all happy. Okay, so to backtrack, yeah. yeah, you're saying that when you're changing your brake pads, you shouldn't just smush the pistons back into the caliper and just put new brake pads in. Correct. Yeah. You, there's a there's a proper procedure. So I heard exercising the pistons. Yes. And exercising, what do you mean by that? Exercising mean um, kind of like working them in and out. So basically, just like pumping the brake while there's nothing in here will help pull the pistons out. You know, expose them, and mm -hmm. then you push them back in. Um, that's kind of like expressing and depressing them. Um, that's what we would call exercising. And so, is the purpose of that to kind of get the seals lubricated with the dot fluid on the inside yeah yeah exactly helps lubricate the seals helps uh, free up any air bubbles that may come into the piston area and then get trapped behind them um, and that's kind of the other main thing is that you know the fluid does slowly expand over time as it kind of collects air and gets contaminated um, things as they become contaminated it will just expand so if you push back the pistons and there's you know the right amount of fluid before now it's a little bit larger, so you're, you know, you, you may have issues if you just push them back in. Gotcha. So, the steps if you're going to replace your brake pads at home, brake pads are worn. Pull the brake pads out, and that, or you know, wheel out brake pads out, and then you are going to open up the lever, right? You're gonna open up the lever by putting a syringe on there, yes. a bleed syringe. And uh, that's going to open it up so that when you push the pistons back in, which is the next step, then that is going to push the fluid up. Can you do that motion again? There you go. <laughs> Put the fluid up to the lever and into the, the syringe so it has somewhere to go. Because yes. if you don't do that and you just push the pistons back in, what happens? Then, then it, will, it will probably damage the bladder that's in the lever. Okay. Yeah. And that's something that we've seen happen before, unfortunately. Gotcha. And is it like going to happen like that every time? Not every time, but obviously as the more worn your pads are, the more you have to push them back. Sure. Is more room for, for potential failure. Gotcha. Okay. And so when you push the pistons back into the brake, um, are you cleaning them or lubri lubricating them with anything? Yeah, we'll do a little cleaning. We won't really lubricate them because that can get them to kind of 
act a little funny because we need them to have some friction on their seals so you don't want to fully lubricate them but definitely a good cleaning so we'll do some isopropyl alcohol and q-tips and paper towel cool and do you actually push the pistons out any further or do you just leave you push them out okay so first you push them out a little bit yeah then clean the exposed part that was on the outside yes and then once they're dry from the isopropyl then we push them back in and exercise uh, and then them. Do a couple exercises. Cool. And are you putting are you putting a bleed block in there or anything to do that? Or do only you only once we're kind of through the flushing system part and then end to the like finishing the bleed. Sure. So when you're actually exercising them and moving them back and forth, you're basically just pulling the lever, and then that's going to push the pistons out and towards you know where the rotor would be and then you're going to go in there with like a plastic tire lever and yep. you push them back yeah, in exactly. so i'll use i like to use this one kush core lever because it's got this nice big handle on it um and it's really sturdy so it's got a nice wide paddle too so it you know you can kind of it's hard to miss the piston um and get into the wrong spot so that's gotcha. this is the one we use yeah and obviously use plastic so you don't yes, damage any yes, obviously pistons plastic. yeah so then my last question here for the internet because the code rsc even though we love them and most of us use them on our on our bikes the internet does not seem to love them quite as much as we do is this something that you recommend doing on other types of brakes or is this just the code rsc this is yeah every brake for sure every brake, regardless of its adjustments or features it's cool you got to open the system to some extent and Lubricating the pistons is, uh, or sorry, cleaning the pistons is is uh, a number one thing to do. For cool. Sure. Cleaning the pistons, exercising the pistons, and uh, opening up the master cylinder on the brake lever is a must on any brand of brake. So this is a sim- something similar. If this patrol had Hayes Dominions or Maguras or Hopes, you would do the same thing. Yep, same exact. Thing. Well, different because it's. But yeah, same <laughs> same procedure. <laughs> cool. Okay. Same principles, but slightly different procedures because they're different designs of brakes. Hey Alex, I was editing the video and realized I walked away too soon and I think I missed an important step on what you do to like button everything up before you take the syringe off. Yeah, yeah, you must have. So the last step is essentially just to leave this all the way on. Leaving the lever open can kind of uh, help you fill the system in the right amount. Especially when you have new new pads and a relatively new rotor, um, it's best to just leave it at that zero point with uh, the fresh pads and fresh rotor in the system. So you leave this leave this syringe on. Um, that way, the system has that pressure relief. It can kind of like top off the lever as the pistons settle in uh, around the the rotor. So um, leaving this on just kind of sets everything at that happy happy spot. You know, right at the end of the setup. After we left off, you push the pistons all the way back into the caliper, put the new pads in there, put the wheel with the rotor in there, and leave the bleed syringe on there so the fluid has open space to move freely. Yep. And then squeeze the brake lever a few times and get that rotor um, and pads all centered up. Yep. And then once that's good, give it a couple squeezes, take off the syringe. Exactly. Yeah. Leave it all. Uh, leave it all at its, you know, happy full full state of fluid. And you also do that with other brands of brakes as well. Yeah, Yeah, Shimano, you leave the cup on, TRP, same thing. You know, pretty much all the other systems you want to leave open, same way. Last question with the SRAM G2s and the Code RSC platforms, there's pad contact. So where do you actually put that pad contact dial at? I roll it all the way to the in position. Um, That way it's kind of, or or I guess the least pressure on the system, usually in in the out. Um, everything's really tight, um, has that short stroke on the lever, um, meaning there's just kind of a little less space and forgiveness with the bladder and the, the lever setup overall. All the way in, meaning the more it has more lever pull all the way to the bar. Yeah, all the way in, meaning yes, exactly. There's, there's more stroke to the lever, um, and then it uh, just has more room to kind of fill. And then from there, if you want your lever pull to be less, so you, you know, barely move the lever and it grabs, then you're going to turn it out. Yeah, yeah, tend to find that like if you were to fill it, um, finishing with the with the lever side, if it was in all the way in the out, you'd be ending up with a little bit less pressure and fluid in the system that you'd want. Um, You usually would um, get a less short stroke. It would be like it all a little longer in the uh, in the all the way out position. And then when you're done, take off the syringe, put the bolt back in there. Yep. Good to go. Fill it all up, top it off. Um, it'll usually spill out a little bit, so I usually pull the pull the boot down off the lever here, just so it doesn't get extra wet. 
So you can kind of like cover it all with a paper towel and fill it up. So just put a little pressure on the syringe, push it in, push it in and then let off. Yeah, push it in just a teeny bit just to, just to make sure that there's no vacuum on the system because you don't want to pull the syringe off and have it pull in any air. Cool. Take it off. Put the bolt back in. Let's do it. Good to go. Yeah. All right, Alex, besides the actual, you know, changing of the pads, obviously the pads touch something and slow you down. That is the rotors. So what do you do here in the shop when it's time to swap pads? We, every time we swap pads, we will um, address the rotor in some way. So if it's getting a brand new pad and the rotor's pretty worn out, um, honestly, we'll typically replace the rotor because that's just going to be the best case for everyone. The rotor brake track does get really worn over time, even if you don't get all the way down to the spring on your pads. Um, so, you know, a good rotor will even maybe only last a couple of sets of pads. Um, this one in particular, although it's the brake track is very worn, would need a lot of resurfacing, it's also very burnt and discolored. So this would indicate that this rider probably needs a larger rotor um, to give him more power and a little more heat dissipation. So we'll probably replace the rotor and increase the size. Cool. So you shouldn't just slap new pads in there and stick it on the on the rotor, even if they're the same compound. So if you go metal to new metal, you still need to clean the rotors and everything. You sand them too, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll always sand the rotors. We use kind of like a, a slightly coarse grit. It's like a 120, I think. Um, but that just takes away the braking surface real quick. Um, is that the one? This is purple power? The purple guy. Um, yeah, <laughs> we love purple around here. It's uh, It just takes away the braking surface real fast and leaves you with a new coarse surface for the pads to Sweet. groove with. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Heck yeah. Oh, hey, it's Tor. Let's go bother him. He loves the camera. Hey, buddy. How are we doing? What's up, dude? What are you uh, working on right now? I see you typing away in here. Yeah, I'm working on an upcoming video talking about the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate Coil. New uh, coil shock that Rock Shock came out with, and I've been loving it, and you're gonna hear about it soon. Sweet. Yeah. What's your word count? My word count on this. <laughs> Whoa. 485. You can actually do that? Heck yeah. How the heck do you do that? How do you do that? <laughs> Tricks of the trade. What's the shortcut? That's gonna be the uh, the clickbait. Command Shift C. Command Shift C. That brings up your word count on uh, Google Docs. I was not expecting to learn something <laughs> so dang valuable from hey. that quick clip, so thank you, Tor. So informative. You're welcome. Come back anytime. <laughs> Professor Wyland. All right, now I'm in my crap clothes and <laughs> I'm doing my least favorite thing and that is painting. I love it just so much. That contradicted itself immediately. I gotta paint this wall one last coat. Today's video, we're gonna paint a wall. Can't wait to get lit up in the comments by someone about my, uh, my rolling form. Or... Someone who actually knows how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> this guy sucks at painting. <laughs> See what you never paint again. <laughs> I'm on the lower section now. That's progress, baby. Did you wake up this morning and think that you were gonna be filming somebody painting a wall? <laughs> Nothing I'd rather be doing at five o'clock on a Tuesday. It's like Michelangelo, Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel. That's actually what my mom made me after. She knew that I would be a great painter. Not of portraits of art, but of walls. All right, I am done painting this wall and it is about six o'clock, we close at six. So I'm going to get back into my normal clothes and uh, kind of tidy up my mess a little bit. Go home for the night, come back tomorrow and do it all over again. If you like this style of video, please let us know in the comments. Uh, we definitely would like feedback because we're trying to do more of these vlog style videos where you kind of just follow us around the shop and see what the heck we do every day. So until next time, click like if you like this, let us know in the comments, subscribe maybe, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Peace out.